British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com. The 2013 Open British Superlight Championship began at Three Sisters Kart Circuit in Wigan. There were some newcomers to the championship who, having had a taste of last year, were to undertake their first full campaign and had already set their sights on their main rivals. Phil, I think, has been my biggest competition. He's consistently good. He has had a few problems in the year, otherwise he would have been a good bit closer. So the drivers are on the grid for race number one of the Open Superlight Championships in 2013. And a good start off the inside for the man in the 150 Super Light. Duncan McBeth, quick look over his left shoulder to see Phil Lee slot into second place behind him. And Mark Richardson, the pole sitter, got a terrible start and ended up uh, cutting grass on the outside there, Chris. Yeah. And he's uh, in the penultimate position. Yeah, you just uh, see Simon Nutter there in that pink Super Light number 19. He stuck his hand up uh, in front of his face when he got a, a face full of roost off the Super Light in front of him. And then at the next turn, he ran completely wide. So I think uh, Simon was uh, slightly unsighted for a little while then and uh, not a very happy camper. Well, we've got a spinner, number 52, James Stevens, just trying to get it restarted in the red super light there. Mark Richardson, as we said, uh, he was the guy on pole position but made a complete hash at the start and uh, he's showing that he's still got the pace uh, despite having made some mistakes uh, in the early part of this race. The question is, is uh, can he force the issue and find a way past Danny Whitby? And we know that Danny's uh, always very tidy. That style that he's got is very, very tidy but Mark trying to force his way up the inside, really hugging the apex as he goes around Luna Bend. He's in position to shove it up the inside as it were, get on the brakes late and he's made the pass and made it stick. Great move there from Mark Richardson. This is the man who looks set fair to take the win in the first race of the 2013 Open Superlight Championship. There it is, and uh, Duncan Macbeth takes the win in race number one. Congratulations, second in race one. How are you feeling? Uh, a bit rough. Uh, <laughs> we had a, bad, a big accident yesterday, as you see, from the car. A uh, bit of an incident with a friend, and uh, my back's a bit sore, my coccyx. Uh, but some painkillers, and I seem to do all right. Or race number two again looks like a great start from pole position for Duncan but Beth time to look over to the right to make sure that he's safely cleared Simon Nutter in second place uh, Phil Lee at the back there uh, just running a little bit wide onto the grass but Duncan but Beth in first place Simon Nutter in second Mark Richardson a much better race start in race number two for him he's in third place at the moment and uh, Duncan but Beth Chris again doing a brilliant job getting that thing off the line second time around now from Simon Nutter and I'm not sure if there was just a little bit of contact there and he's switches lines on the brakes and then out brakes himself massive understeer gets caught up in a tire and what's he going to do now he's actually on the wrong side of the tires he's made a decision to try and rejoin the track but there's no way for him amazing onboard footage here simon nutter is actually not on the track now he joins the track meanwhile a little bit uh further back down the field. I think Mark Richardson's now realised he's been promoted into second place and he's just pulled the pin now and headed off into the distance there. Mark Richardson running a little bit wide as he comes out of the S's and then they head back into Luna Bend and 56 is Danny Whitby in third place at the moment but uh, Danny's got that decision. What, what does he do? Does he push to try and see if he can make Mark Richardson make a mistake and get second? Or does he really just think, no, I've got to just hold on to third place here? Into the start, finish straight. And there is the pointed first finger and another first place for Duncan Macbeth in race number two. Unfortunate to see Simon go off the track in my mirrors. I thought he was, I made a little mistake. He came up, I defended my line. He tried to go around the outside, got on the loose stuff, made a mistake and off he went. So almost handed to me that one super light open race at number three the marshals clear the front of the grid and it's another great start for duncan mcbreath fantastic he's been a really really sharp off the start all day and he gets the whole shot again in race number three but the battle really on for second third fourth and fifth here as uh, danny whitby coming under pressure or actually making a pass in fact on mark richardson for second place he's up the inside there mark richardson in third and uh, well 
uh, Simon Nutter have a look. In fact, he does indeed. Going up the inside then to Mark Richardson to claim third place then behind Danny Whitney and some great racing here with Phil Lee bringing up the rear of this pack. Mark Richardson just trying to have a look up the inside there. Some great pace that we've seen so far today but uh, Simon Nutter definitely had the better of him there in terms of the track craft. Phil just trying everything. He's actually driving a very, very short lap when you look at his lines. He's blending into every single car. Can't drive out He's of that one. Up the inside and uh, well he got the power down nice and early there. They always say about getting the power down before the apex he's thinking he actually had it flat out all the way through there trying to get the power down but uh, yeah he's driven a very very tight lap and that's the first time he's drifted wide and it's cost him Mark Richardson coming back at him but actually Phil somehow holds on to that position but with just two bends remaining it looks like Duncan McBeth may well have done enough to take the checker flag here Luke Fingers in the air again for the third time on the day and Duncan McBreath does indeed make it three out of three here at Three Sisters. You got a clean sweep today, what's your secret? <laughs> I wish I knew. A little bit of luck comes my way I think. Um, kind of difficult driving people, you know, right on your backside all, all race. Just had to control it. I uh, don't know if there is a secret, cool hedge we say. I think before the race I've got to get in the zone and calm myself down. I think sometimes I drive a bit too aggressively and uh, it's not very fast. A lot of fun, but uh, to win the races you've got to be smooth, haven't you? Smooth and calm. So Duncan McBeth is the man who leads the Open standings after one round. Danny Whitney in second place with Simon Nutter and Mark Richardson tied on 88 points for third. Round two was at Rednell Raceway, a new circuit to the championship on the Welsh border. But mechanical gremlins for Mark Richardson meant it could prove difficult for him to maintain fourth place in the championship. Um, I mean, they're quite powerful machines and they're easy to light the back tyres up and lose control on corners. So here we go then with race number one for the Super Light Opens. Great start there from Duncan McBeth, who won three out of three in round number one at Three Sisters in Wigan. Phil Lee in second place there, just running a little bit wide. Oops, that's Mark Richardson parked on a tyre, apparently. Yes, a little bit of assistance from uh, race director Dave Deard in there, and uh, he may actually carry on because he doesn't look like he's done any damage. He's just uh, managed to uh, get his wheels protruding in the air over that uh, over that tyre. Mark Richardson now, uh, I would imagine, is running on the road just behind uh, the leader, but uh, a lap down. So uh, that could be a little bit awkward for Phil Lee, who's actually, in fact, in second place at the moment. But he's got to let Phil Lee through, and Phil acknowledging the fact that he's letting him through. But Mark Richardson, real disadvantage now, Chris. I just see the wheels up the inside there of one super lap. That's number 40, Colin Griffith. So actually, I think we're riding on board with James Addy there. Yeah, James Addy in that 698 machine. As you say, this is his first race in an open superlight here at Red Knoll, uh, or anywhere for that matter. And there he is, James Addy in the 698 machine, putting the pressure on Colin Griffiths. And we know that Colin's got plenty of pace, but we also know that James Addy's fairly quick. From Colin Griffiths' point of view, there's a bloke behind him who he knows very little about. He's never raced with James Addy before. And we know that James Addy's a real tiger. And uh, last of the late breakers, James Addy there putting the pass on Colin Griffiths. Can he make it stick? Yeah, he gets it turned in. And uh, Colin Griffiths there thinks Thinking, oh dear, this boy's a bit fast. Well, to be fair, you've got to have something about you to be able to put a move like that on someone as experienced and as quick as Colin Griffiths and to be able to make that oh, move stick as well. But yeah, he stuck it in the tree instead. Duncan McBeth, I mean, absolutely miles ahead, just looking so relaxed as he takes the checkered flag for a great race win. Colin Griffiths uh, stops it completely, blocking James Addy. Uh, arms in the air, he stalled it, Addy can't get past. And he's figuring out what can I do now because it's so narrow. He spun it 180 and um, going to try and get around the outside of Colin Griffiths. But I just wonder now, he can't go anywhere. Duncan was just too fast. I couldn't, couldn't hang on to him. Race number two of the Open Superlight Championship. Duncan McBeth, the man who took the win in race number one at Rednall, and he's got another fantastic start. Phil Lee showing some pace last time out, but Phil Lee sneaked up the inside as he managed to make that stick, Chris. Yeah, Danny Whitney also losing out to uh, number 17 there too, Mark Richardson, but a great manoeuvre for Phil Lee there, getting out in front, and now the pressure's on uh, Duncan McBeth there as... Uh, working his way through the field number 17 Mark Richardson giving a, a real race now also battling it out with Danny Whitme James Addy's adding to the mix now too as they're hard on the brakes into that left hander brilliant all fast get from James Addy there around the outside Chris 
Phil Lee just lets the uh, super light run out to the right hand side. That's where he needs cut to back. be. Yep, look for that's the what Duncan but best going for. He's going for the cutback. He's got the power down, but Duncan uh, not in the right position on the track. And Phil Lee just closes the door ever so gently and slightly politely. Again, keeping his super light on the inside of the apex to just uh, make sure he's got the line that he wants. Looking in his uh, mirrors and he knows that he's got a very. Uh, very determined Duncan Macbeth all over the back of that number 10 machine that Phil Lee's sitting in but the man out front in the 10 number 10 super light is Phil Lee ahead of Duncan Macbeth in second place Phil Lee just uh, getting it through the left the right left flick and he picks up the race win in race number two Duncan made a little mistake and I capitalized on it and uh, managed to hold him off but he made me work hard so here we go then with the final open super light race of the day here at Rednall and conditions a little bit more damp Great start by the looks of things for uh, Phil Lee in the number 10 machine, but Duncan Macbeth's got the inside line into the first corner, and he does, in fact, make that pay, but Phil Lee going for the cutback. Duncan Macbeth uh, having a quick look over his right shoulder, Chris, but taking that wide line through that first, uh, sorry, that right-hand bend, and I think Macbeth has done enough to stay in front. Well, absolute brilliant driving from Duncan Macbeth. He managed to get the power down as Phil Lee's in all sorts of trouble coming under pressure now from Colin Griffiths. Griffiths passed up into second place. He goes wide. Phil Lee is passing back. Great race, neck and neck here turning in. And uh, Griffiths is on the brakes. He slid it. He's gone out wide. Phil Lee's back into second place. Awesome racing here, Luke. Colin Griffiths again, another problem for Colin. And uh, he looked like he was quick. And I was saying, would he have an answer to uh, the pace of Duncan Macbeth? But unfortunately, Colin Griffiths retiring there. And that man, Phil Lee, is uh, promoted into second place as a result of Colin's uh, misfortune. So Phil Lee with the job of uh, trying to uh, put himself between Duncan Macbeth and the first place prize. James Addy got a problem facing the wrong way again. As soon as he got past Phil Lee, you know, the pressure was off because Phil was slightly overdriving. But a great race victory for Duncan Macbeth in Superlight Open Race 3. So Duncan Macbeth maintains his lead at the top of the Open Championship standings with 207 points. Phil Lee working his way into second place now ahead of Danny Whitney in third. The British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com. The British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com. Round three was at Finmere Showground in Oxfordshire. No, I'm excited for something new, something different, uh, and obviously with my injury, I thought that that would be easy to do. It was four wheels instead of two to set everything up. It was a new challenge. James Addy, the newcomer to the championship, moving over from Supermoto, goes off pole position for open Superlight race number one, then Colin Griffiths in P2. Yeah, James Addy quick in the last round. This time he gets pole position, but straight away he's been uh, demoted to second place. That man going ahead of him is Mark Richardson in the number 17 Superlight. Great start from Mark, Chris. Now under pressure from Addy in that 698 Superlight, and massive understeer for Mark Richardson. He leaves the door wide open. James Addy says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. That's still come at Beth, the current championship leader there oh massive understeer followed by oversteer there for Colin Griffiths well there is the check and flag and as you say Luke quite rightly taking his first race win of the season for Superlight's open at race number one so the drivers on the grid then for Superlight open at race two they're looking at the lights and they get away nice and cleanly good start from James Addy there time to look in the mirrors good start from uh, Mark Richardson again but James Addy getting the whole shot plenty of time to look in the mirrors for James just making sure uh, everything's as it should be and a good start from Colin Griffiths in third place ahead of Danny Whitby there Chris yeah. Oh, and Mark Mount in the uh, back of James Addy there. There's a pass going on there on uh, Danny Whitby there. Up the inside goes Simon Nutter. They almost touch wheels there. In fact, I think they did touch wheels. Uh, just glancing off each other's uh, outer runs there. Nutter makes his way past then. And uh, Danny Whitby relegated. Just see uh, Duncan Macbeth there uh, having a battle with uh, the number 74 machine of Charlie Wellborn. And uh, Duncan's oh. been struggling a little bit today because uh, he retired from race number one. He's been used to running at the front of the circuit. Coming into this round, he'd won five of six races. And now on this really narrow track, he's got to try and sort of fight his way through to the front. And there just isn't the room. And I think it's fair to say that he's perhaps a little bit quicker on the tarmac than he is on the dirt. 
yeah, coming out of that little, uh, I'm going to call it the orchard section there, and a bit of a T-bone going on there, and making contact with uh, number 70. That's Charlie there. Wellburn, Charlie Wellburn. Fairly, fairly uncivilised, one would say there. I was going to say, turn. it certainly looked like the end of the slip road for him there, didn't it? And the gap uh, unceremoniously being closed. But oh as no. to is uh, Simon Nutter, by the looks of things, and it looks like he's lost a wheel. And uh, Duncan Macbeth now with that oh. power there, he looks like he's found the gap there, and forced his way up the inside, no contact there. But that's the number 46 machine. Oh, but Alan Henley, and it looks like Alan's retired. It's, uh, oh, that doesn't, that's look good. that doesn't look good. Now uh, James Addy crashing there, losing the lead there with Mark Richardson coming past him. And James Addy is in trouble. It looks as he lost a wheel too. Yeah. Is that his race over? Yellow flags are out. And it looks like James Addy's collided there with Simon Nutter. The red flags are, in fact, out. And the race has been stopped. Just went over the jump. Next thing I know, I was dragged into the trees and... <laughs> and it hurts, that's all I know. Uh, so I did decide to pack in, because obviously time I've had off with my wrist packing in the supermoto. And then hurt it again doing that. I thought it were, I thought it were invincible. Well, James Addy not uh, coming out for race number three, so not sure what the problem is for James, but uh, maybe he's damaged that super light, but certainly uh, not able to take his place on the grid for race number three. So Mark Richardson is promoted to P1. And uh, we've got Mark Richardson on the front row oh. and uh, the man in the number 19 machine, uh, Simon Nutter, uh, behaving like his namesake there and went completely off the track for some reason known only to him good self. And that's Simon Nutter again retiring, Chris. Yeah, he's parked it in a bush again and, uh, well, that's where he crashed in the last race and that was what uh, caused the race stoppage last time around. He actually managed to bounce off and land on the inside of the circuit and he's in a dodgy position there because uh, where's he going to go? Red flag, there it is from one of the marshals so we're gonna have a restart so the uh, grid restarts uh, probably no simon nutter on this grid damage to him though he is he's there at the back and jinking right again this time but uh, from the left hand side of the grid so that worked out properly this time mark richardson again getting a fantastic start he gets the whole shot with the man in the number 40 super light in second place Colin Griffiths ahead of Phil Lee and I think Duncan Macbeth in fourth at the moment there Chris Danny just ahead of Charlie at the moment chasing Phil Lee here number 10 just ahead of him yeah we've always said Phil Lee's uh, definitely uh, quick and a super light as you said Chris I think uh, took the championship in his first year of competing in super lights oh. Danny Whitby's pulled off Oh, and, and Simon uh, Nutter's pulled out now. And Simon, um, Simon Nutter's fact, just been stopping at various strange points during the course of every race <laughs> today, bless him. <laughs> Colin Griffiths there uh, just making a little bit of a mistake, losing some time. And Duncan McBeth uh, wasting no time with steaming past there. Danny Whitney and Simon Nutter both getting going after letting the entire field come past them. So there's a bit of a race on between them two now. All sorts going on. Mark Richardson cutting the uh, corner there completely as uh, Duncan McBeth there coming past. I think that's... Uh, Alan Henley, I think, Alan waving Henley Duncan McBeth through there. And uh, Mark Richardson taking the checker flag there after cutting that corner. Yeah, well, I still only knew. I've only been at it a couple of weeks. And, yeah, we're, we're getting angry. You're very keen to get off the line today, I noticed. Yeah, well... <laughs> So Mark Richardson now takes the top spot in the Open Championship standings with 270 points, relegating Duncan Macbeth to second place, while Phil Lee and Danny Whitby are tied on points for third. Back on familiar territory, round four was at Blyton Park in Lincolnshire, with tyres looking set to play a key part in the day's events. Round four, I had a really good race with Jonathan Bennett. There's no way I was getting past him on the straights, but uh, different tyre strategies what uh, won it for me at the end. So the drivers on the grid for the first open super light race of the day. Race director Dave Dearden pointing the guys to those lights as they go out. The guys get off the start and a Whoa. bit of a problem there. I think Phil Lee just getting across the front of James Addy there, but James uh, going up over the back of the uh, the wheels there. And that was a little bit awkward. Yeah, and Jonathan Bennett on the inside getting hustled there. I think with Duncan McBeth, who we briefly rode on board with. So Phil Lee's out in front and uh, Duncan McBeth actually in second place. So Phil Lee uh, got a place up from the starting position there, making... Full use of being on the front row, and uh, yeah, great start there for Phil Lee. Duncan McBeth in second place. Jonathan Bennett up into third, past James Addy there. And I think oh. that's uh, number 72, Jonathan Bennett, having done brilliantly and got himself uh, into third place. He's just totally spun it in the dirt section there. Has he got on the gas too much? Well, I was just about to say, Jonathan Bennett doing so well because he started in fifth and really worked his way through there, and he's uh, created all sorts of chaos there with number 52, uh, James Stevens 
And number 46, That's Alan Henley, Henley being yeah. held up as well. Those two locked in battle now, and I dare say this one will be interesting for the next couple of laps. Yeah, Mark Richardson ahead now, and he goes around the outside. Can he get the power down? He completely overslides it. Massive oversteer there for him. And it allows Danny Whitby surely to get away now. It looks like James Addy's managing to dive up the inside of Danny Whitby. Does he make it stick? No, Danny Whitby holds on. Yes, Danny he runs does. Wide. I think Addy's got it through. Yes, he has. James Addy threads the needle and takes fourth place. There's 150, Duncan McBeth taking the checkered flag then for open super lights. Race number one. Race number two. The lights go out and it's a fairly good start from everybody there. This time, maybe a little bit cleaner. Phil Lee uh, keeping his nose clean this time. He's the one who gets squeezed a little bit. Mark Richardson, good start from him. Tried to go around the outside of Duncan McBeth for a moment, but Duncan held his line. So Mark Richardson in second place. Duncan McBeth holds on to pole position in first of Phil Lee in third place where that man in the number 72 machine oh, and mark gone wide and lost two places there is phil lee and i think jonathan bennett squeezing through there mark being chased down by number 698 james addy that's the top five at the moment with danny whitby down in six just a little bit further back oh, mark, again, richardson mark richardson goes richardson, very wide there he's doing a bit of farming out there just plowing the field oh well, two passes there i think james uh addy there coming through as jonathan bennett makes the move uh, back on Phil Lee there too. Yeah, Jonathan Bennett moving up into second place. But it looks Ooh. like Addy's getting a great pass on there. We've not seen too many uh, passes at that point. Phil Lee just getting a bit of wheel spin and James Addy sorting out the acceleration, getting the traction and he picks up another place and moves up into third place. But those guys a little bit further down the field, that's number 46 and at number 52, Alan Henley and James Stevens having a battle of their own and we can see which one of them gets the burial. <laughs> Looking at each other, I think there was a nod from 52, James Stevens, to say, uh, thank you very much, sir, I just did you. The last lap flag is out, but a big wing mirror full of James Addy. He moves to the left, he moves to the right. Having a look here, and it's interesting to see the flex in the carbon fibre on James Addy's roof. Now he has a look at the inside. Oh, two wheels there for James Addy. He gets a cone stuck and he's super light too there as he enters the dirt section, and it all went wrong for him. A little bit of understeer there for Duncan. Ooh, massive understeer, whoa. <laughs> Oh, very how, lucky. Just saying how tidy he was, and he nearly collects a massive sequence of three hay bales. But I think Duncan Macbeth has done enough, kept it all in order and on the black stuff, and he'll come through to take another race win in the second Superlight race of the day in the Open category. The final Open Superlight race of the day. There, the lights go out, and the drivers get off the grid. That's a good start again from uh, the man in the 72 machine. That's Jonathan Bennett. But this time, he gets to the front and gets the better of Duncan Macbeth, and Duncan Macbeth finds himself in second place and could risk losing the option for the three out of three race wins here today, Chris. Oh, it's more He's gone very wide as well there. He has gone very, very wide, actually, and uh, having a look around the outside of Jonathan Bennett, but that is basically no man's land here at Blyton, and Phil Lee pops it up the inside. No surprise to me there, to be fair. James Addy, too, having a look, but not quite able to do it. But the battle really on Danny Whitby, putting the challenge on Charlie Wellborn here as they come down this main straight, pops it up the inside, and does he make it stick? He just about gets the wheels ahead and moves back into the line then. Oh, and contact out. there for uh, number 74, Charlie Wellborn. He's had to make a, a quick excursion into Scunthorpe, I think, there. <laughs> he's definitely gone on a detour. And now he's got to try and do oh, it the hard way. Fantastic move there. Again, we got the slow in, fast out. Duncan Macbeth, brilliant move. And I was just going to say a little bit earlier that he looked like he was just sitting there stalking the man in front of him, Jonathan Bennett. And in the end, he's oh. had it, but he's had... Somebody was definitely running wide, but that was on board with James Addy as Phil Lee ran wide. We were preoccupied with a brilliant move from Duncan Macbeth, but again, Duncan, a little bit too much pace into the corner. Managed to sort it out and miss those bales that time, though. Mark Richardson there has spun it, full 360 to get himself back on circuit. That's at the top end of the, uh, of the circuit, so he rejoins. A great victory then for Duncan Macbeth, a well-earned uh, victory and a great pass too. We're going to have a fine line of aggression. Um, you know, you've got to have a good balance and uh, just keeping it smooth and, you know, I was running full wet so I was also conscious of not overheating them. So Duncan Macbeth retakes his lead in the Open Superlight Championship with 369 points, relegating Mark Richardson to second and Phil Lee in third. British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com. The 
British Superlight Championship, sponsored by WantToLiveAfloat.com. Back at Three Sisters for round five, the battle was on between Duncan McBeth and Mark Richardson, but not far away in third was Phil Lee. I think possibly the highlight for me was um, here at the last meeting, Duncan and I had three really good races. Ten drivers competing in the open class today, so uh, Phil Lee working his way to the front row. Great to see him starting up at uh, the sharp end of things, as it were, and making a great start there. Just getting the advantage over uh, Duncan McBeth, going out very wide there, Colin Griffiths. But uh, yeah, the ever-present Colin Griffiths having a real tussle there with Simon Nutter and the two bang wheels there. Side by side they go then, coming through this valley section. Hard on the brakes then for Colin Griffiths. He goes out wide wow. and leaves the door open for Simon Nutter to get through there. James Addy, they're looking to force the issue with number 46 there, Alan Henley. Addy not able to get up the inside at the first time of asking, but on the next one, he definitely forced the issue, got his way through. And uh, now he's coming under a little bit of attention from number 74 there, and that's Charlie Wellborn. And and uh, I think it'd be interesting to see with these two, this is going to go all the way to the finish now. There's the last lap flag, Chris. So uh, Simon Nutt has got one lap to try and force his way past Mark Richardson to pick up uh, a podium. Into the last corner then, Phil Lee has done enough to take the checker flag in some comfort then for Open Superlight race number one. Open Superlight race two. And the uh, race director points to the starting lights. We've got a great start from the man on the inside of, sorry, the outside of the track, and that's from pole position. That's Phil Lee managing to get the best of it again. He gets the whole shot ahead of Duncan McBeth, and that's Simon Nutter there in the number 19 machine in th third place, coming under some uh, very uh, definite attention from Mark Richardson, who I think was trying to see if he could get the opportunity to dive up the inside there, but Simon Nutter just getting his track position very tidy. Was that uh, a pass just behind? I think Colin Griffiths might have uh, dived up the inside of uh, Danny Whitney in the back of the shot there, so maybe Colin making up a place, and then he'll be trying to chase down Mark Richardson ahead of him, and uh, the drive not really there for Alan Henley up the hill, but James Addy gets it all sorted out, and he disappears as they head up towards Coward Summit, dropping down the hill now on board with James Addy, and you can see that uh, his camera is a little bit dirty, and somebody's left a hay bale on the inside there, that's slightly awkward and a bit of a hazard in the road but uh, James Addy managed to negotiate his way around that and that's number 52 James Stevens getting involved in the action here with ahead of him I think Charlie Wellborn but James Addy already put a good bit of distance into Alan Henley and I think Charlie Wellborn may have got past Alan Henley also there in the back of the shot Having a real challenge at Mark Richardson, can he go wide and go around the outside? I doubt it because I think he's actually been resurfaced there and probably a little bit slippery on the outside there of uh, the S's Definitely, but uh, as you said, Chris, the uh, the water on the dirt sections made it very, very interesting because they're all spinning up as they get onto the tarmac because of the moisture on their wheels, and it's giving those who, uh, who get it all sorted out perfectly the opportunity to make that pass up the hill or at least put the pressure on. You can see all the way for uh, the last couple of corners, Mark Richardson coming under pressure from Ooh, Colin Griffiths, pass. and he's made it stick now, finally. Just got a, a few hundred metres to go up the hill, then down the other side, bit of a right turn at the bottom of the hill, and then uh, take the chequered flag with glee in this one from Phil Lee the final super light race of the day from three sisters here in Wigan on this occasion finally Duncan Macbeth manages to get the whole shot into the first turn here at three sisters oh, Wigan. oh all sorts of uh, problems Mark there Richardson for the driver. really in trouble Mark Richardson doing a fantastic job of uh, collecting that super light rather than collecting the barriers and uh, yeah brilliant recovery from Mark Richardson there he wasn't really he was in the air for a while but he wasn't off the track for that long but Duncan Macbeth out front missing all the action and amazingly Mark Richardson despite being airborne is in third place Phil Lee's got up the inside of Duncan Macbeth but Duncan could got to be last of the late breakers there he runs wide but he might have just done enough because the next bend is a left-hander as they go into the dirt section and he does he manages to hold on to it Simon Nutter ahead of him but uh, some brilliant action out front and uh, somebody's picked oh. up a tyre that's Mark Richardson and uh, he closes the door uh, unceremoniously on Simon Nutter and Simon looks to have stalled on the uh, the uphill section which is pretty difficult for him to recover from fantastic driving from Phil Lee to be fair Phil driving a very very clean race no contact and uh, a great performance from Duncan McBeth to hang on and to uh, hold off the pressure but a brilliant race from these two and Duncan McBeth takes his first win of the day here at Three Sisters in the final race of the day but brilliant action on track from those two The start was a bit hectic I got sort of knocked up into the air and got sort of goosed from behind as you might say um, which cost me a bit against Duncan but you know I managed to catch him up and push him all the way so yeah, you know, fair dues really. It was a good race. We fought hard. It was really clean. We didn't touch each other. Well, I didn't touch him, so, but pushed him really hard. 
So after five rounds of the championship, Duncan Macbeth holds on to his lead at the top of the championship with Phil Lee still in second and Mark Richardson now in third. Seaside Circuit in Middlesbrough played host to round six and with the top three changing order yet again it looks set that the championship would go down to the wire. With a slow start to his season, Simon Nutter looked to improve on his seventh place in the championship. We've had uh, a lot of problems with the car at the start of the year, the engine. Rebuilt the engine and come back trying to fight but we had a good round at Teesside but that's about it really. I don't think I've done uh, much racing, pretty disappointing after last year. Open Superlight race number one then, Colin Griffiths making a great start off the outside there of uh, Duncan Macbeth. Macbeth though, managing to get the hammer down into the first turn and getting the lead here Luke. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think this circuit will definitely suit Duncan Macbeth. He's uh, got uh, his mirrors full of uh, a very uh, ambitious Colin Griffiths in uh, third, second place at the moment. I thought Simon Nutter was just going to sneak past Colin Griffiths for a moment there. Oh, <laughs> Simon problems. Nutter forgot to turn left there by the looks of things. There is the battle here with... Uh, Simon Nutter trying to work his way through the field and uh, get past... Uh, I think that's uh, Alan Henley in front yes. of Simon, actually. Simon is uh, past now and back up into third place, sort of back where he started there. He has had a fantastic year, Duncan Macbeth, as he said, it's the first full year for Duncan and uh, I think he's got his sights set on the championship and he's going about it the right way. That's the race win even in Superlight Open Race for Duncan Macbeth. Just having a bit of fun with Ken. So uh, these two cleared off after I crossed through barriers. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but yeah, good, uh, good fun. So six drivers on the grid pointed towards the starting lights and they're pretty much ready to go and it looks like a good start from Colin Griffiths this time. Would he get the better of Duncan Macbeth into the first turn? No, it looks like Duncan's uh, done enough to get the jump on Colin Griffiths but Colin looking to go around the outside there. Has he managed to pull that off? He has, that's fantastic. Brilliant move from Colin Griffiths there and Simon Nutter uh, sort of sticking a front wheel into the action there just trying to get up the inside of uh, Duncan Macbeth here but now Duncan Macbeth, it's going to be interesting to see if he can force the issue and find a way past Colin Griffiths now. Duncan going very wide there, he's going for the cutback here but he's not going to do it through that right hander surely as uh, they get on the brakes there and down the hill there. Duncan Macbeth could force the issue on uh, Colin Griffiths as he has done and he's in fact got past we can see from through, his on board yeah. there oh, and well, he's got past again. back so uh, great action going on from these two and uh, yeah, dicing it out, uh, in fact, a di oh, and the wheels on the grass, oh dear. and uh, well, a nice flame actually out of the exhaust there too from Duncan, and now closing the gap is Duncan Macbeth on Simon Nutter, can he force a way past, I mean, my observation of the first couple of laps really has been it's that uh, yeah, he's just done it up the inside, I was going to say that Duncan's just clipping a bit too much dirt and maybe getting some uh, loose dirt on his tyres there, that's losing a bit of traction going into the corners uh, and what that's cost him, but he didn't really waste any time there in uh, getting past Simon Nutter, Nutter coming back at him, he goes out wide, is he going to get the cut back? I don't think there's much room for him to do that there. Problems, this is the onboard shot then for Duncan Macbeth, he's pulled up there, uh, there's some rubber on the tarmac there too, so have we got some sort of wheel issue, a puncher of some sort? Let's have a look at these two battling it out then, and on the left there is uh, Duncan Macbeth, it looks like he's got a wheel off. Yeah, Duncan Macbeth. Uh, so it a... looks like the suspension arm's gone there. Actually, it's dropping down there. So. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe the, that's the drive the, shaft. The drive arm, yeah. That. It could be the uh, the drive shaft to uh, the. So, but maybe Duncan Macbeth has. Uh, got himself into contact with something he'd rather have missed but Colin Griffiths isn't worried he takes the chequered flag and the win in open super light race number two I'd set the fastest lap in the in the last race so I knew I, I was you know quicker and uh, but he was seen to be getting a better um, out the corner so this time I thought I'll have him in the first two or three if I can and he tried to be defensive in the first corner and I thought I'm gonna have him around the outside and once I got past him it was pretty good plain sailing he did um, he tried to come by me down here but there was no way he was going to uh, get through there he just outbraked himself and then he, I don't know what happened, he went, um, I think he broke a drive shaft. It's the final race of the day here at Teesside for Open at Superlight race number three. Away from the start they go, and just snaking off the start there, Colin Griffiths is getting the best of it, is at number 19, Simon Nutter, into the first turn loop. Yeah, brilliant start from Simon Nutter, had the opportunity to uh, to plant it into the first turn there, and Duncan Macbeth uh, already up into third place, brilliant start from the back of the grid for Duncan and uh, about three turns and he's uh, got himself into third place. Now the battle is on between Simon Nutter and Colin Griffiths and 
Duncan Macbeth. So this is going to be an interesting race, Chris. That's spinning very, Thank very you. wide Thank there. Thank you, Ken Walton, for illustrating that point beautifully. It was beautifully. And I'd say 10 out of 10 for Pirouettes there as well. But Colin Griffiths still in second place. But to be fair to Simon, he's running a, a, ahead of uh, what you could say a two oh! of the he's, uh, he's chucking it at the scenery again and he's spun it. And uh, there's a bit of 360 business going off here. I was just about to say, he's doing really, really well to uh, to stay out front of the real sort of uh, tigers in this pack. Uh, and then he, uh, he felt the pressure and threw it at the wall. Well, Colin Griffiths then uh, says, uh, thank you very much. I'll take that and uh, out in front now. Yeah, looking at it from the point of view of glass half full in terms of Simon Nutty, he's still running there, albeit uh, with quite a big gap. Being... Oh, I'm round the outside, a brilliant pass there, oh. sorry, from uh, uh, from Duncan McBeth. I was just looking now, I think we've lost an exhaust here from Colin Griffiths, he's pulling up. Yes, yeah, uh, something Colin... happened, there was something in the track that I saw and it was, uh, it was dark and... Uh, quite brown there it is a rusty uh, exhaust <laughs> God, that's goodness. definitely seen better days hasn't it that piece of kit there yes sir oh and we've got dodgems now going on here <laughs> as up the inside goes Simon Nutter he makes the pass stick so uh, Duncan McBeth looking to come back at him but a tricky section to make that one stick well look he's so quick in there Simon Nutter a great race win he worked hard for that in open super like race 3 we've had a lot of problems with the car um, we had some bent valves but over four meetings we've sussed out and we've really done the head this time and as you can see it's worked wonders. I was with Simon but I couldn't get, couldn't get close enough to overtake so I let him have that one. He won it on his own merit so I just had a bit of fun at the end. So after six rounds of the Open British Superlight Championship the top three stay the same. Duncan Macbeth though increases his lead in first place ahead of Phil Lee in second and Mark Richardson in third. British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com. The British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com. Round 7 was back at Blyton Park, where former Supermoto national rider Paul McNamara made his four-wheel debut. It's a lot more difficult than I, I thought it would be. It's, uh, you drive your car on the road and you think, ah, it's so-so, but then you get in one of these things and they're so powerful, it's, it just wants to go sideways everywhere. The Open Superlight Race 1, Duncan McBeth, the fastest man in qualifying. That's the man in first place to the first turn. The usual suspect, Duncan McBeth, gets the whole shot with Phil Lee in second place and Colin Griffiths in third. Phil Lee's making it his business to just harass Duncan McBeth mercilessly in order to try and keep this championship alive. But well, Duncan's McBeth got out very wide. wide there. Yeah, and he's not. He's missed the drive. Phil Lee's up the inside, I think, there, Chris. He what is. Incredible movie. You just see how much debris hits the front of these super lights from the onboard camera. We're riding with Colin Griffiths, and I think he too is past Duncan McBeth. So while he's lost two places there, Duncan, he can afford to lose a few points in this round. Phil, that's number 67, Paul McNamara, just uh, rejoining. He's struggling a little bit, but. Uh, Managing to get himself back onto the tarmac. Now Colin Griffiths just having a quick look up the inside. I think that was more to just to give Phil Lee something to think about to try and distract him into maybe outbreaking himself. But uh, Phil Lee's a wily fox, so uh, I don't think he'd be fooled by that one so easily. But there's the 56 machine. That's uh, Danny Whitney just I coming up a little bit. Oh. That's number 74. That's Charlie Wellborn uh, looking for a gap that perhaps, to be fair, wasn't there. Well, we're riding on board with Colin Griffiths. As he slowed right down, it looks like he's got a problem here, Luke. Yes, Colin Griffiths uh, gone from uh, second place, dropping down the field, and uh, the other guy's just steaming past him. Colin pulling off the circuit, and uh, I'm not sure whether he's going to cruise back to the pits and just trying to stay off the track to uh, to be safe, but uh, he's adjusting his mirrors to make sure he can see everybody else coming past him. But Colin Griffiths, you're right, Chris, definitely with a serious problem that looks to have put paid to his race. Oh, what a shame, and it looks like another excursion for Paul McNamara there. Phil even having a cheeky look there to see exactly where he was. Not quite sure where the turning in point is, but he power slides his way across the line to take the win then for Open Superlight Race 1. Open Superlight Race number 2. Hopefully they'll all get away clean. A good start from Simon Nutter in the uh, pink one there further back. But Charlie Wellborn oh. forgot to break there and he tipped into the back of Colin Griffiths, I think, there, who we're on board with. Charlie's uh, managed to get off and disappear off into the distance. But, uh, oh dear. 
Doesn't Colin Griffiths old. has a, a very wonky looking front left there. So I think Colin, he needs to get his track, <laughs> tracking check there, actually. Alan Henley in number 46 coming under the uh, the pressures from the aforementioned Charlie Wellborn. And given uh, Charlie's uh, attempt at passing uh, Colin Griffiths before, Love diving up the inside. Yeah, no contact on that one. Brilliant pass from uh, Charlie Wellborn. Using all of the available tarmac is definitely the phrase that pays for Charlie Wellborn. And he's got masses of power. He's just driven past Simon Nutter there as if Simon was going back. Backwards. That's amazing. Oh, just oversliding it completely. It's all going on here. Alan Henley seemed to get stuck there. Charlie Wellborn uh, pulling into the pits and some sort of problem there for Charlie. We'll look at Phil Lee. He's uh, just uh, coming down this big, fast start. Finish straight now. Tips it in to the right hander on the final lap of Superlight Open race number two. And Phil Lee's done the business, taking the race win in the second race of the day. That's two out of two for Phil Lee. He fell into place, really. Uh managed to gap Duncan a bit and then I made a couple of stupid little mistakes and he called me up again and started pushing me and um, so I just sort of really just concentrated on where I was going and what I was doing and not worrying about what he was doing you know so yeah it was, it was a good race. So the driver's on the grid and ready to go for the final open super light race of the day and we've got another front runner going off the back row so it'll be interesting to see how Colin Griffiths gets on in this race. The poor McNamara problems for him again spinning it round. Yeah Phil Lee looking to try and make it three out of three which would be nice uh, as we said earlier Duncan Macbeth managed to do that earlier in the season here at Blyton so uh, I would imagine Duncan will be quite keen to stop Phil managing to uh, equal that little accolade that was uh, nailed on earlier in the season by Duncan Macbeth so in oh, the uh, section Dun there. Duncan Macbeth making uh, no doubt uh, in Phil Lee's mind that he wants passed and he moves out of the slipstream he's having a look at the inside Duncan not able to make a challenge on Phil Lee and that what he does straight up the inside it's curtains for Phil Lee as Duncan Macbeth moves into first place. Colin Griffiths battling out. So too, Simon Nutter having a look at Phil Lee as uh, Colin Griffiths moves out of the slipstream, has to lock up the brakes. You see the smoke from the tyres there. And uh, yeah, Colin not really got an answer to Danny Whitney at the moment. He's uh, making that Ooh. super light about as wide as an Arctic lorry. There is the possibility that Duncan Macbeth, if things finish for him the right way, he could actually potentially... Uh, that maybe even tie this championship up if he wins this race. Shh, I think he has to finish this race. He has he done. Has done He's I just taken the, the British Championship and donuts from him as well. What do you mean, bin this? Well, Operation in... Crash. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit excited to win that one. Phil has been uh, measuring me all day and uh, I was, you know, I was buzzing inside that cockpit. I don't know if you could tell. Even now, I'm still shaking with adrenaline. It was uh, a wicked race. final round of the season was back at Three Sisters in Wigan to bring the championship full circle. And whilst the battle continued for second and third, Duncan Macbeth was forced to watch from the sidelines. Um, my tall cartilage and my knee playing that great game of football, I really would love to be out there, but um, it's uh, you know, one of those things, lucky enough to have scored enough points throughout the year. There is no Duncan Macbeth on this grid today. Uh, Duncan out with some sort of injury, but as it stands, he's already the champion for 2013. So Phil Lee, now he's just got to see if he can do enough to fight for second place. Duncan Macbeth can uh, take it all very casual in the in the paddock, Chris, and yep. just observe these boys uh, all going at it, hammer and tongs. Well, a great uh, qualifying session for Mark Richardson, but a brilliant start for Phil Lee. He's out ahead of him and really coming under pressure here from Mark, no doubt. And uh, these two squabbling out. Colin Griffiths there too. There's number 74, Charlie Wellborn. They're all entering the dirt section and I think this is going to be a really interesting race and as you say maybe battling for the minor positions is this contact there I think between uh, Charlie Wellborn there and the man ahead of him Colin Griffiths oh there's a move <laughs> brilliant move from Mark Richardson straight up the inside of Phil Lee and to be fair I don't think even Phil saw that coming in his wing mirrors well Colin Griffiths at the moment having a battle with Charlie Wellborn Locking still he goes wide as he there. locks up there and at the inside comes Charlie Wellborn can Colin drive defensively here as Wellborn done it he shows a couple of wheels there he's round the outside brilliant driving from Charlie Wellborn there and to, to be fair to keep Colin Griffiths at bay that's no mean feat at all so uh, really caught there let's see how long it takes and Danny Whitney having a look too because Whitney is battling for second place I think in the championship at the moment so he's really going to be uh, giving it his all in this Colin Griffiths just 
looking pretty calm and composed there ahead. <laughs> just taking a wheel there, Charlie Wellborn, just getting one of his four wheels on the grass, but that's allowed Danny to just close the gap a little bit. Yeah, Charlie Wellborn doing a Gordon Knox there, I think in exactly the same place where he just ran a little bit wide and stuck a stuck a wheel on the grass and then it spun up. Oh, and, Charlie, uh, oh Colin Griffiths. For Colin Griffiths, yeah. he's pulled up, he's stopped. There's a man out front, Mark Richardson, who uh, it's fair to say has grown some wings. Mark Richardson taking uh, a great race win there. He's had some good races this season, but that was a cracker in Open Superlight Race 1. The lights are about to go out and Colin Griffiths gets some great wheel spin off the back row. I think we're on board with Colin now. I was just going to say, he'll probably be looking to try and work his way to the front. I think he's made a few places up there, but then the man uh, just in front of us there, Charlie Wellborn, uh, just uh, getting back across Colin. So Colin manages to make up a couple of places at least there, Chris. Yeah, all the drivers looking now. They're now on wets. as Phil Lee coming under pressure from Mark It's a good job they're on wets. He's made another great start. In fact, actually, I think it wow, was Simon Nutter in the background. Lost a lot of speed and uh, went very, very deep into the corner he's absolutely belting it down here and Mark Richardson got the advantage over Phil Lee he's done it again he seems to be so quick today we're back on board with Colin Griffiths making yet another position up there now getting on the back of uh, Danny Whitby I think ahead of him there just uh, getting past uh, number 74 yeah. Charlie Wellborn unless uh, something goes wrong mechanically you can't see him being uh, being beaten by anybody else today maybe a bit of rest by is the key as uh, 46 goes off it's not Valentino Rossi it's, it's Alan, Alan Henley <laughs> there <laughs> And uh, speaking of Henley, there's enough rain here for it to be like the Henley regatta, but Mark Richardson just doing a bit of bat marker passing as he takes the chequered flag. Fantastic two out of two for Mark Richardson. I didn't expect it to rain quite that much, but luckily we're on wet tyres and we, we're as good as we're going to get. The lights are about to go out at the front of the grid. We see everybody getting away and another great start from Mark Richardson there. Danny Whitmy in second place with Colin Griffiths in third and Phil Lee forced out wide so he drops down to fourth place. And to be honest, Chris, I'm not actually sure whether Simon Nutt has made the grid. He may have dropped out on the formation lap with that same mechanical problem that uh, ruled him out of race two finish. So disappointing. Oh, and big problems there for Charlie the Whitmy. Charlie Wellborn. Charlie Wellborn even, my mistake, sorry. Riding on board, I think with Colin Griffiths there, is it? Yeah, that's Colin Griffiths just behind just Danny Whitmy. Just look up the inside of Danny Whitmy, I think he's done it. <laughs> I think he's now in front of Danny Whitmy. So, uh, I can't really see a lot more. <laughs> oh, and a bit of a nudge from Danny Whitmy as he goes past Phil Lee. Lee's gone wide. Here comes uh, Alan Henley too up the inside. That really cost Phil there, but uh, quite a, a hard-fought battle there from uh, Danny Whitmy there. Uh, really taking no prisoners as Alan Henley's having a look at the inside too. Oh, Danny Whitmy in this contact. <laughs> Whitmy on the brakes and Phil Lee's back at him. This is crazy driving here. Alan Henley's having another look up the inside of Phil Lee down Rogerson straight, turning into Luna. That's Problems 67. for Paul McNamara there. Yeah, doing a bit of grass cutting here at Three Sisters, but back on the black stuff. Mark Richardson comes around the final corner here at Three Sisters. Three out of three for Mark Richardson. There's the chequered flag on the final race of the 2013 season. It would have been worse if I was here not racing and I was relying on results to win the championship with people doing not so well, which is, is never good to wish people not doing so well. But uh, good to watch on the sidelines today. I did enjoy today. So with the work done after seven rounds of Duncan Macbeth maintains his 659 points, but Phil Lee takes second and Danny Whitmy takes third. It is one heck of a lot of fun. I have loved this year. It's my first full season. Next year, I'll be back. British Superlight Championship, sponsored by wanttoliveafloat.com.